In this video, we are going to have a look at writing decimals as fractions and fractions as decimals. But before we do that, I just want to revise the uh, rational number set and the irrational number set. So a rational number is any number that you can rewrite as a fraction. Okay, And that fraction, so it's um, a number over a number, a over b, but a must be an integer and b must be an integer. So it's any number that can be written as an integer divided by an integer. For example, a quarter is a rational number. One is an integer, four is an integer. So just for those of you who are a little rusty, your integer set is all your negative uh, numbers, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero. In fact, all the ones from negative infinity and then all the way to positive infinity. Okay, so one over four, Negative 3 is a rational number because you can rewrite that as negative 3 over 1. Negative 3 is an integer and 1 is an integer. Okay, and all decimal numbers, for example, 0, 1, that is also a fraction because uh, it can be written as a fraction, 1 over 10, so it is therefore also a rational number. And one that we often forget about is our recurring decimals. For example, like 0, 0,3 recurring. Remember, the dot shows us that that 3 is going to carry on to infinity. It is also a rational number because in its fraction form, it can be converted to 1 over 3. And I'm going to show you how you go about changing recurring decimals into fractions in this video. All right, so basically, it's any decimal, any recurring decimal in any fraction, in any number that can be written as a fraction. An irrational number is the opposite of that. So it's any number that you can't write as a fraction. So for example, an example of a number you can't write as a fraction is something like the square root of a non-perfect square like 10. If you find the square root of 10, you get a decimal as your answer that is not recurring. In other words, there's no pattern. The same numbers repeat themselves over and over again in a pattern. It's not a recurring decimal and it doesn't end. It's a not ending decimal. Okay, in other words, it carries on and on and on to infinity. Another decimal like that is something like pi. Pi has got infinitely many decimal places and there's no recurring pattern to them. So you cannot write them as a fraction. And in fact, all thirds are irrational. So the cube roots of non-perfect cubes and the fourth roots of non-perfect fours, like the fourth root of two, for example. All of those would be irrational numbers. Okay, so let's just start off with some revision. For example, if we want to write fractions as decimals, when you want to write a fraction as a decimal, always look at the denominator of the fraction. If that denominator is a factor of your powers of 10, so for example, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, etc., etc. So if those numbers can be divided by your denominator of your fraction, then your job is a little bit more straightforward because all you need to do is rewrite that fraction with the denominator of 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, depending on what the factors are. So 4 is not a factor of 10 but it is a factor of 100. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So if I times 4 by 25, it will give me 100. Whatever I do to the denominator of a fraction, I must do the same with the numerator to keep it equivalent. So 3 times 25 is 75, 4 times 25 is 100, and as a decimal, that has two zeros, so we know that we're going to have two decimal places, and whatever the digits in the numerator are become those decimal places. So 0, 0,75. All right, with 1 over 6, it's a little bit more difficult because 6 is not a factor of 10, it's not a factor of 100, it's not a factor of 1,000. In fact, it will not divide into any of your powers of 10. So what we need to do in this instance is remember what the fraction line means, and it actually means divide. So 1 over 6 actually means 1 divided by 6, okay, 1 divided by 6. And if you want to do that division, we want to take 1, so it goes inside the division sign, and we want to divide it by 6, so the 6 goes outside of the division sign, okay. If you struggle with what goes inside the division and what goes outside, remember that the numerator starts with an N and the denominator starts with a D. So the numerator is Ned, 
and the denominator is his donkey. And Ned will always sleep inside the house and his donkey will always sleep outside the house. Okay, so numerator goes inside, denominator goes outside. We want to remember that 1 can be written as 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 all the way to infinity. And the reason we do that is because I can see that 1 divided by 6 is 0. You, 6 doesn't go into 1. Okay, put your decimal comma above where it is in the underneath, in the divide sign. Now we can take 10 and divide it by 6. That's why we needed to add these zeros on. 10 divided by 6, 6 goes into 10 once. 1, 6 is 6, so there is a remainder of 4 to get us to 10. 40 divided by 6, the closest um, power there would be 36. 6 sixes are 36, and 36 to 40 also leaves a remainder of 4. 40 divided by 6 will go in 6 times. 6 sixes are 36, so there's a remainder of 4. And you can see here that we're just going to keep going on forever and ever and ever. So instead of going on forever and ever, what we do is we use our recurring symbol. So it will be 0, 1 and the 6 will recur. So just the 6 gets the dot because the 1 doesn't repeat itself, only the 6 does. Alright, writing as fractions. Normal decimals, very straightforward to write them as fractions. You look at the number of decimal places that there are, that will tell you how many zeros you have on your power of 10. And you simply write whatever digits there are in the decimal as your numerator. And then don't forget that if your fraction can simplify as 2 over 10 can, that you must simplify the fraction at the end. 3 comma 4 1 has got two decimal places, so it will be a fraction over 100, and it will be 341 over 100. That does not simplify, so it leaves. Uh, we just leave it as 341 over 100. Right, now when we come to 0,26 recurring, now we have a problem because 0,26 recurring means 0,262626 and it carries on. We can keep writing those two sixes forever and ever. So our challenge here is that how many zeros do we put on the end of our one in our fraction? Well, we can't because it'll be infinitely many zeros. So we need a different way of being able to rewrite this recurring decimal as a fraction. And I suggest that once I have done this example, that you pause the video and actually make a note of what the procedure was that we followed, because this is the process you will need to follow every time you change a recurring decimal into a fraction. And then just another note, remember that this line here means that both the 2 and the 6 recur. I could have also put dots on the 2 and the 6, that is another way that it's sometimes written. That also shows that the 2 and... Okay, so 0,26 recurring. We're going to let x equal 0,262626. And remember that carries on and on and on. And we're going to call that equation 1. We are creating equations here because what we would like to try and do is to eliminate or get rid of these decimal places that recur. All right, now, there are two decimal places that recur here, two decimal digits. So we want to multiply both sides of our equation by the power of 10 that has two zeros because we've got two decimal places. And once I've done this, hopefully you'll be able to see why I chose 100. Okay, so we choose 100. 100 times x is 100x. And 0, 0,2626 times 100, we move the decimal place two units to the right when we times by 100. So that will then give us 26,2626, etc., etc. If we had only multiplied by 10, we would have then had 2,626262 and we would have actually changed the order then of the decimals and it wouldn't be useful to us anymore. Now what we want to do, in order to eliminate or get rid of these decimal places, the easiest way to do that is to actually subtract them. If you take 26,262626 all the way to infinity and you subtract 0, 0,262626 all the way to infinity, at infinity, you'll have the same number, so any number minus itself is 0. So you can see that 6 minus 6 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, 6 minus 6, all of those decimals, 
all that recurring decimal disappears. It becomes zero, and you're just left with 26 minus zero, which is 26. Okay, but because these are equations, you can't just minus the two right-hand sides from each other. You also have to minus the two left-hand sides from each other. So 100x minus x is 99x. And we've already seen that 26,26 recurring minus 0, 0,26 recurring is just 26. Now to get x by itself, we divide both sides by 99. And so x is equal to 26 over 99. And remember, what did we make x to be equal to in the first place? We made it equal to our recurring decimal. So what we've effectively done is we've changed the recurring decimal into a fraction. And if you punch 26 over 99 into your calculator, you will get 0, um, 0,26 recurring. All right, there are some for you to try on your own in your homework book, so please pause the video here. Number 1a, 37 over 50. 50 is a factor of 100, so we can rewrite this as a fraction over 100. We multiplied 50 times 2 to get to 100, so we have to multiply 37 times 2, which is 74, and that gives us 0, 0,74 as a decimal. 4 over 9 is, um, 9 is not a factor of a power of 10, so here we have to do the division. So remember, this is 4 divided by 9. There's your numerator and your denominator. The numerator always goes inside the divide, the denominator outside. It'll be 4, 0, 0, 0. 4 divided by 9 is 0. Put the decimal place above where it lies in the um, division sign, under the division sign. 40 divided by 9. Well, 9 fours are 36. So 9 will go into 44 times with a remainder of 4. 40 divided by 9, it's exactly the same thing. It will be 4 remainder 4, and we can see that this will carry on and on and on. So therefore, 4 over 9 is equal to 0, 0,4 recurring. Number 2a, writing the decimals as fractions. The first one is, a, is not a recurring decimal, so it's a straightforward one. There are two decimal places, so it will be a fraction over 100, and the numerator is just all the digits in the decimal written together. All right, number B is a recurring decimal. So we're going to need, so we start off by letting X equal to our recurring decimal. So it'll be 0, comma, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 to infinity. Let that equal equation one. We have three digits that are recurring here. So we are going to multiply both sides of the equation by 1000. So we have 1000 X. That makes sure that we get the full recurring portion in front of the decimal comma and then the same order after the decimal comma. We need it to be the same order so that when we subtract the two equations that those decimal places eliminate each other. So 1000 minus 1 is 999. 123,123 minus 0,123. All the decimal places will add up the word minus to give you 0 and you're left with 123. Divide both sides by 999 and your fraction form of 0, 0,123 recurring is 123 over 999, and that does not simplify.